Okay, if I can say one thing about Inseminoid, I have seen this movie probably twice before. On this rewatch, I thought, why did I ever recommend this? <laughs> I was like, why did I think this was good? I, I'm baffled as to why I wanted okay. it to be on baffled. our list. <laughs> okay, well, and the the weird thing is it was already on our list, but I did find the message you sent. Oh, please read it. July 30th, 2020. This was back when we were <laughs> it's still in talks. We hadn't recorded even an episode yet. I was still coming up with the list, but at this point we had a pretty good idea of what we kind of were looking to cover on this podcast, and you sent a message. <laughs> what did I say? I know you've got your hands full with a lot of movies, but I have a few to float by you if they're not in your list. One, Big Trouble in Little China, which, hey, we've covered. Great movie. Two, The Running Man. Three, Inseminoid from 1981. (laughs) Four, Phenomena from 1985, Dario Argento. Five, Forbidden World from 1982, which we've also done now. Yeah. And six, Barbarella which you described as one of your all-time favorite weird, schlocky, 18-plus rated Star Trek-like things. Yes, yeah. And that is not what I would describe Inseminoid as. <laughs> okay, but but apparently it might have been how you would have described Inseminoid at a time. But but yeah, the, the, the embarrassing part is that my response was those were already all on the list, so yes, even <laughs> Inseminoid. Well, also, I want to I wanna just l- let the audience know, because this was, what did you say, July of 2020? Yeah. I want to give a brief glimpse into my life at that period. I was essentially locked down in the countryside outside of a city in England, in northern England. Uh, I was supposed to be working on my master's thesis, but instead I was having cases of beer and whiskey delivered to my residence door. And you were watching Inseminoid. And I was watching shit movies on Amazon Prime. It's what it's there for. And sneaking cigarettes and cigars off a Juliet balcony in my residence. I may have been heavily intoxicated when I watched this and also when I pitched several movies to you. But the other ones weren't bad suggestions. Though, no, of so course. For that. They, <laughs> almost in hindsight, in Seminoid seems weirder. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got upset with you, Patrick, a couple episodes ago uh, when we had to cover Saw 3 and... Uh, the Angry Red Planet. Yeah, and, and I was like, this is stupid. I hate this. And now I feel bad because I... <laughs> Pitched in Seminoid. This is exactly how I knew it would happen, too. <laughs> I, I, like, knew you were going to be disappointed by it. Because I've seen it before, also. And I remember thinking it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it could have been. Especially title, poster. Because for those of you that don't know, the poster is just a largely naked woman lying down <laughs> with cleavage visible. And people in spacesuits staring at... What appears to be a monster emerging from her, uh, <laughs> from her forbidden world, if, if from, we were to refer to it another movie title, um, from her angry red planet, yeah, yes, from from her <laughs> from her furious red red planet, but yes. So, I guess, yeah. I mean, if you take into account that's the poster, I don't quite think that's really what the movie is. No, when I get to that scene, I have some insight to give you. Oh, no. On that scene. But yeah, so my apologies, Patrick, and any listeners, if you like to watch movies that that we watch and follow along, I'm sorry that you've watched Inseminoid. 